On a scale of one to 10, how depressing and embarrassing is this? Okay, so last night, this is a real story. Producer Val was like, did you really do this? I really did this. Last night, I'm laying in bed and it's time for me to go to bed. And I was like, I want a bedtime story. So I got on that little AI chat website and I told it to make up a story about a cockroach who hosted a potluck. And here's what it wrote. Once upon a time, there was a cockroach named Carl who lived in a cozy little corner of an old dusty pantry. He was always known for his love of good food and good company. So one day he decided to host a potluck. He invited all of his friends from the pantry and each one promised to bring a dish to share. The day of the potluck arrived and everyone was excited to taste the delicious spread. First to arrive was a shy cockroach named Benny who brought a dish made of old breadcrumbs and moldy cheese. Everyone politely took a bite, but as soon as they tasted it, their faces contorted in disgust. They all apologized to Benny for not liking his dish, but he just smiled and said, it's okay. I know it's not the best, but I tried my best. Next came a sassy cockroach named Francine, who brought a dish of wilted lettuce and stale crackers. Again, everyone took a bite and apologized, but Francine just shrugged it off and said, hey, at least it's healthy. Finally, Carl brought out his dish, a savory stew made of juicy crumbs and rich spices. Everyone oohed and ahhed, and as they dug in, they all realized how much they had been missing out by focusing on the less than delicious dishes. As they ate and chatted, they all became friends again, laughing and enjoying each other's company. They learned that it's not about the food, but about being together and having a good time. From that day on, Carl's potlucks were known for their delicious food and even better company. And everyone always made sure to bring their best, even if it wasn't the tastiest dish in the world. So I read that and you know what? I fell right to sleep. I don't think I'm, I don't even need my ambient anymore. I just need the cockroach tails of Carl. To be completely honest with you, I don't know that I'm really all there. I'm Alex Clark and this is Poplitics. Thumbs up this video and subscribe for Carl the Cockroach. There you go. Come again, sir. Today on the show, we're gonna discuss Giselle Bundchen doing a cover story with Vanity Fair about her and Tom's divorce. And now Tom says he's retiring for real this time. Ashton Kutcher admits he was pissed off about his ex Demi Moore's memoir. And Dr. Phil is done. The show is ending. So much to get to. Don't ask questions. Just give in to the power of the D. We are getting a tell-all on Tom Brady's divorce from Giselle herself in Vanity Fair. Loving the old school vibes of doing a magazine tell-all. It's just better than like an Instagram story, you know? People have gotten lazy when it comes to sharing their deeply personal stories. We want drama! We want class! Every drama has to be your drama or it doesn't count. And somehow this is all about you. It's incredible. My only criticism is that it seemed a little soon. A little eager of her, you know? Make us wait like a year and then do this. The month that this is coming out hasn't been solidified yet, but one Condé Nast insider told Page Six, I could see this as a cover to celebrate Earth Month in April, as that's a subject close to Giselle's heart, but it could also be a summer cover. She better announce that she's dating Pete Davidson and it's the happiest she's ever been, or it's not gonna smash. <laughs> Oh, okay. Plot twist, after all this, Tom Brady says he is retiring for real this time. I think you only get one super emotional retirement essay and I used mine up last year. He ruined his marriage for what? To lose to the Cowboys in the playoffs? Embarrassing. See you next year. <laughs> Before we get into Demi and Ashton, I gotta remind you, there is another episode of The Spillover dropping tonight at midnight Eastern. Two in one this week, aren't you lucky? I chat with a woman who went to college apathetic about politics in the 2010s, got full blown indoctrinated by leftist ideology and then ended up working on Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016. Now she is a right wing conservative working for PragerU. And her biggest warning is that parents should keep their kids out of college at all costs, unless absolutely necessary. Subscribe to The Spillover anywhere you get your podcasts. Did you ever read Demi Moore's 2019 memoir, Inside Out? This is on my list, but I have not gotten to it yet, but everyone raves about it and says it's a must-read celebrity memoir, so I definitely want to. Just as a little backstory, especially for the young worms watching like producer Valentina. <laughs> 
Before Mila Kunis, Ashton Kutcher was married to Demi Moore for six years. There was a 15 year age difference between them. And get this, a lot of people forget this. He was only 26 when they got married. So he was helping take care of an eight, 10 and 12 year old. They're only 26. That's younger than me. They got divorced in 2011. Then there's Mila Kunis. They obviously met in 1998 while co-starring on that 70s show, but wouldn't date in real life for 15 more years. In 2011, when Demi and Ashton announced their divorce, Mila Kunis and Macaulay Culkin broke up. A year later, in 2012, Ashton and Mila reconnected at the Golden Globes. They started casually dating, moved in together, and in February 2014, got engaged. One month later, they found out they were pregnant, and in 2015, they got married. Have been together ever since. Now they've got two kids. So when Demi's memoir came out, Ashton had been with Mila for a really long time, and he said he was effing pissed about the book. He says, I'd finally gotten to a place where the press had really laid off me and my wife, Mila, and my life and my family, and then the next day, the paparazzi are at my kid's school. In her book, Demi wrote about the two threesomes she and Ashton had during their time together, and also accused him of influencing her relapse at one point, Demi got pregnant but had a miscarriage. She wrote about all this stuff. There are no bad feelings between the two now, but Ashton did say that their divorce made him feel like a wholesale effing failure and that nothing makes you feel like a failure like divorce. He says, you failed in marriage. Tis better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. I am not sure that you understand. I will not be the same after Dr. Philip McGraw retires. This show raised me. It was a cultural reset. You're not the complete boss of me. I control my body. I control what I do. He helped me write a beautiful eulogy for my grandmother once. You're ugly, you're disgusting, I'm gonna kill you, give me $200. No, him leaving is actually so sad though, and it's the end of a big era in daytime TV. It seems like cable is going away, right? No Oprah, no Ellen, no Phil. Now all we have is The View and Kelly Clarkson? What is, what is Drew Barrymore on? I'm, I like don't even know what channel. Is Rachel Ray still on? Dude, speaking of Rachel Ray, have you seen her lately? She is unrecognizable. I'm like worried about her. Something isn't right. I don't know if she struggles with alcohol or what, but tell me this is not concerning. And then, uh, we Yo, what's going on with Rachel Ray here? Another footnote. There's a lot of footnotes on I know she's at home, but then I will miss Mr. Phil, though. I've always admired him and Robin's relationship. But now, guess what? He can enjoy his retirement with his daughter-in-law, Morgan Stewart. Woo! If she has a million fans, I am one of them. Which month is worse, January or February? When I still lived in Indiana, January and February made up the most draining, soul-sucking, depressing time of the year. And now in Arizona, I like this time of the year. It's great. It's like the summertime here when I feel like I've overstayed my welcome at an Airbnb located on Satan's rump. Will you be missing Dr. Phil? Did you like the cockroach story? Have you read Demi's book Inside Out? Please comment below and then thumbs up this video and subscribe to this channel. No episodes on Friday, so catch up on the two spillovers that came out this week and I will see you on Monday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark and this is Poplitics.